In 1 Peter, Peter is addressing people who are suffering. Suffering is a theme throughout this whole letter. And as Peter is reaching a crescendo in chapter 5, in verse 9, he reminds the sufferers that if they look around, they would realize that they're not the only ones who are suffering. At first glance, you may read that and say, why would he say that? How is it helpful to a sufferer to say, oh, well, everybody else is suffering too? Well, it, in, in saying that, Peter is addressing one of the principal, dark, debilitating lies of the enemy. In your moment of suffering, to whisper in your ear and say, where is your God now? Perhaps he does have favorites. Perhaps he has turned his back on you. Perhaps your experience is unique. Now, all of us, when, when we're suffering, go through, why me? Why now? Why not them? And so Paul is addressing something that's very important to understand. It's a theme in Scripture. It is a theme of the universality of suffering. It's there in uh, Romans 8 as well, where Paul speaks to suffering and assumes the universality of that experience. Why do we suffer? Well, we live in a fallen world that's not operating the way God intended. If you're not suffering now, you will someday. And if you're not suffering now, you're near someone who is. You see, if you think that your suffering is indication that you're unique and God has turned his back on you and he's playing favorites, then you will doubt his goodness. And when you doubt God's goodness, you don't run to him for help. First Peter 5.9 is in the Bible to point out that lie, to warn us against believing that lie and to embrace that we're not unique, that God has chosen us for us to live in this broken world, and he meets us in the regular experiences of life in a fallen world with his amazing grace.